Good morning. Greetings. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Shwa and I am the host and founder of a podcast called Light Up with Shwa. It's a weekly podcast on conscious living and parenting. And under this topic, uh, nowadays especially, I'm also addressing uh, coronavirus um, pandemic, uh, how people are feeling. So I am going to ask my guest uh, about that uh, later. But first, we will have uh, some other questions related to his expertise and um, what uh, I have uh, asked him. And uh, you will know in a minute, but I hope you will subscribe. If you haven't already, please do so. Uh, subscribe to Light Up with Shwa. I have a website. Please do visit, see what you like, what you don't, what can you suggest. It's lightupwithshwa.com. And I am uh, available on most of the platforms, but um, my active platforms are YouTube, Instagram, Facebook has the links, and LinkedIn has, and Twitter, and all. But it's available on Spotify, iTunes, CastBox, TuneIn Radio. I've added iHeartRadio, uh, Radio Public. I don't know. They, they have all these new things coming up. So anyways, uh, my guest today is a young man. Uh, he will introduce himself, but his first name is Stephen. That's how I will address him. So Stephen, welcome to Light Up with Shwa and have a, I hope you're having a wonderful morning in your home <laughs> <laughs> i am happy monday yes. yeah it's a little dreary outside here in boston but uh yeah things are things are going well yes so tell us your full name and what do you do and who you are sure so my name is steven snyder i have been living here in boston for about seven years but i was born and raised in mandeville jamaica and my family still lives there Okay. Um, I am currently a master's student at Harvard studying sustainability and sustainable development mm. through their extension program okay. and uh, getting a master's program there. So I'm using that um, as an opportunity to uh, kind of pivot out of my prior career in corporate banking into uh, something more sustainable that contributes to my island home. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So what made you pivot from there? Like something triggered something happened uh, you had a dream what happened <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a long time coming oh, okay. um, my, my family moved to Jamaica to work as missionaries they do a lot of social work um, in schools and different churches mm -hmm. different, uh, education programs and um, yeah they really instilled the importance of taking care of our community okay. so um, I, I've always wanted to go back and work in Jamaica, and one of the big ways that um, I want to contribute is how the island prepares and um, is able to survive climate change. Okay. So okay. Yeah. I needed to go back to school mm -hmm. to learn more about what is happening in this space mm -hmm. and um, be able to have the skills necessary to work with, with other people in this field. Mm -hmm. So following up with this uh, before I enter into um, other questions because this is relevant and our topic is environment and that's what you do and that's why you are in sustainable uh, what would you call yourself that you're working in sustainable financial uh, sector yes okay. exactly okay. Um, and I'm doing that because I'm leveraging the skills that I had before working for um, financial institutions right mm -hmm. there's a lot of skills a lot of um, networking a lot of um, technical abilities that are perfect for those um, industries that I can bring over into this more sustainability field. Mm. Um, and I truly believe that when, when we're able to finance the right projects, we're able to have real impact and deep impact, um, enough so that we can prepare for major challenges that we're facing, for example, COVID-19 right now. Right. Right. This young man has so much to offer and I want to get uh, as much as uh, I can out of uh, his uh, expertise, uh, knowledge, especially being from Jamaica. I mean, people love to go and visit and do, you know, spend their holidays there. And I would love to go not only for holidays, but I want to visit the place, meet the people actually. Mm -hmm. And I haven't done that yet. And I live in the United States since, you know, three more than three decades. So I, I should be doing that. Hopefully, I hope I can do that. Um, so what will this do after, like, when you're done with your education? I assume you are working already in this area, like with your 
projects that I, I attended, I met you through your conference. Mm -hmm. So are you like really heavily doing that in order for people to learn about Jamaica and its environment? Um, go ahead. Sure. Yeah. And it was really great to meet you at that conference. Thanks for participating. What she's referring to is what we call the OI conference, a partnership with Oikos International, a student group all around the world um, that focuses on sustainability in finance and management and how to inspire curriculum change yeah. by getting young leaders to participate in, in sustainability and learn about it. Um, so the reason why I host events like that is to communicate to my community and to educate those around me about what sustainability is and how it can impact um, our planet. And like you were saying, I, I work in this space um, in sustainable finance, and I'm using these conferences as a way to not only meet people like yourselves um, and network with them and learn what projects they're doing, but also for myself to learn because you know, we had so many presentations and I got to listen in to them and, and learn directly from those experts in the field. Um, so, you know, one of the topics we discussed was sustainability and how the financial institutions, how those markets are moving towards thinking about people, planet, and profit. Mm. Now it's always been so focused on the short term. Mm. What are the next quarterly results going to be? Well, with sustainability practices, you're thinking not just about that. You're thinking about the long term and how your business decisions are going to impact the social as well as environmental aspects. That's very good. And that's what is needed. And I wish that we had started early on. And thank you for thinking and doing that. And uh, this is the hope. Uh, I think uh, the, our young uh, uh, generations are the hope. And I think if they work with people who are aware of this uh, issue and uh, are, have been working on the, you know, all these uh, generations have a good, uh, they can combine together their efforts and really do good work uh, instead of blaming each other, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, what is the situation in Jamaica? Because that's why you are really, um, mm. that's your place. Uh, that's what you are passionate about. You want to bring the awareness also and contribute to the deteriorating situation there. Is there, what is the situation in Jamaica? Absolutely. Um, so you mentioned it at the start of how Jamaica is known as a tourist yes. destination. Yes. And I love it. It's a beautiful paradise. You have the sea, you have the mountains, you have practically everything that you would ever need to have. Um, and people love it. The people love it. They come to Jamaica in droves. Yeah. But what has happened is that the island is you know, very dependent. Many islands are on tourism. Mm. And this is a this is a problem, especially like now with uh, coronavirus preventing right. people from traveling. Mm -hmm. um, our economy has basically come to a standstill, uh -huh. um, and with this, you know, boom that is um, tourism. You know, it employs so many people and it puts food on the table. It, it makes our our economy run. Um, it also has strong environmental damages uh, to the planet. Um, so Jamaica has a problem. With our coral reefs, they've been they've been damaged um, from over tourism. Um, so have our fishing stocks, which have been damaged from overfishing. Mm. So one of the things I'm passionate about is raising awareness for protection of our coastal resources, um, because without them, we're not going to be able to have feed our communities both from the fish themselves and and from the tourism dollar. So um, it's really important that financing happens of projects that are going to protect the environment, um, that they're gonna protect our coral reefs and, and restore our mangroves and prevent plastic and pollution from getting into our waterways. Um, because then if, if we don't, we're gonna end up losing these very valuable uh, natural resources that we, that we heavily, heavily depend on. Okay. So that's part of the current situation going on in Jamaica right now. That's, that's okay. So I hope it improves and yeah. I hope uh, you get all the energy and yeah. yeah. And and to that point, there there's a lot of people um, who are great activists in this space. Okay. Um, and part of the motivation for me to transition right is seeing um, so many of my friends like waking up and talking more about the environment. You know, you mentioned 
at the start of this how it's important for the young people yes. to lead in, in these charges and I really see that happening now in Jamaica and I want to be a part of that. Okay. I can I can lend my hands to help protect and grow my island. That's very good. That's good. And that uh, it it yes you are from there but I also see it that it's not uh, you know if that if Jamaica is good if that island is in good health then it affects the other Mm -hmm. the rest of the world as well it is all connected so we do think of our own spaces and places that okay that's where we are supposed to uh, be but i f look at it as holistically because uh, if uh, just like a body you know if one place is um, not feeling one of the organs or one of the limbs is not feeling well and it's not you know doing so great it affects the rest of the body so i think that's how our planet is so we mm -hmm. uh, we need to have all the islands and then you know um however it is uh, we can get into the politics of it at this time but um however it is um, carved out but it does it is one body so hi yeah that's important thank you thank you for doing this um because i'm hopeful because that will maybe trickle down to other islands and people and and it's good that you're doing it internationally so people can uh, be, I don't want to talk about too many tangents because I was thinking of Maldives and Bangladesh and all the places that are um, in that kind of situation <coughs> anyways ask you what encourages you and what disappoints you in the matter of environment and climate change yeah um, so what encourages me so much is seeing the like grassroots activism that is happening right now. Um, majority of your listeners have probably already heard of Fridays for Future or Greta Thunberg um, mm -hmm. or um, Extinction Rebellion or um, the Sunrise Movement. Mm -hmm. These are all very powerful organizations that have started from youth coming out and saying, you know, I need to raise my voice if my planet is going to survive, if I'm going to have a future. And so for me, that's that's what's really inspiring and motivation is that, wait, if these youngsters can do it, me as a youngster as well, I should be doing it with them. Yes. Um, but what, what is frustrating is that people are not listening to the science, that you have many people here in the United States as well as elsewhere in the world um, focusing on profit, focusing on material wealth and their personal status instead of thinking about humanity mm. and um, listening to the scientists who, who don't have any bias when it comes to this. They're just presenting the facts. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's part of the reason why I went back to school is to learn these facts my, myself and, and to be really question the data. And the data proves that we need to change the world we live in if, mm -hmm. if we want to survive. Mm. Do you feel in your research and uh, in your experience that you have found that science can be also uh, biased at, at times or you know I've heard I didn't know either because I was very blindly following the science but then science is done by scientists who are human beings and do they have their personal motives or fundings or what goes on there I mean how, how can we find out that this is authentic um, um, information yeah absolutely um I, I think reading it for yourself and, and looking to see if there's actual studies done on this okay you can, you can quickly see if a survey or if uh, a research doesn't make sense mm -hmm. you don't have to be a scientist to, okay. to see that it doesn't make sense sometimes research is paid for by um people to to advance a specific agenda mm. um for example coal and oil companies have paid for research to show that climate change isn't man-made, mm. right? And that these yes. very limited exactly. studies that only look at very specific time frames mm. can do that. So yeah, there, there are ways to play with the data. Okay. So, you know, to, to that point, we need to be both discerning and, and maybe even um, be, be focused on, on the real personal connections. Mm -hmm. Are we helping someone mm -hmm. or are we hurting someone? Yes. That's a basic question that you don't need science to tell you yes or no. 
That's true. That's true. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, in your research, what have you found out? Like, uh, who is uh, the contributor of degradation of environment, and is there any? Uh, have they improved uh, in internationally, or you know, how how is the data on that? Yeah. Um, so there there are major contributors mm-hmm. to what's happening right now in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, w- when you think of who are the largest um, polluters. It really comes down to a hundred companies that are the largest producers of um, coal emissions, of oil emissions, um, of all the plastic waste. Mm -hmm. And um, there are, for example, um, specific points where all of the plastic ends up in our oceans Mm -hmm. of, of where it's not being treated properly. And if we were to stop these specific rivers, right? then most of the plastic wouldn't end up in our ocean. Um, So yeah, there are specific companies at fault and there are specific countries that need to do better. Um, But without like laying blame Mm -hmm. on on specific countries and specific people, I think it's important for us to remember that we all have a part to play in this. And oftentimes I've heard arguments here in the United States to say that, oh, China is the problem. Right, because they have so much coal, or they have so many people, or there's the plastic is their problem, they're not recycling. Um, but the fact of the matter is, we have to look at it on a per capita basis of how much pollution happens per person. Mm. It's about lifestyle, yes. And the American lifestyle, um, if, if everyone was to consume like an American, we would need five planet Earths. Yeah. To, to, ha- to be able to sustain that sort of lifestyle mm-hmm. where we all drive our own vehicle, you know, where we live in these massive houses, where we buy all of these plastic things, um, where we travel so much around the planet, we have all of these electronics. And I'm not trying to say that that lifestyle is bad. That, that's not the point. The point is that we have to think about, okay, this impacts the planet. Mm-hmm. And Americans, we have a huge impact on our planet. Okay, so let's come to this. How can parents and adults or schools educate uh, people or youth mm-hmm. to be aware of this uh, uh, this area that it's not necessarily we have to reach uh, a level where we are getting suffocated and we'd have no clean water and the pollution is this and this and the other. Uh, how can we just educate ourselves that this is part of our life? And this should be, we should be paying attention to it. Like now, if it is coronavirus, now we are suddenly stopped, and the environments are, uh, the the nations are saying, oh wow, it's such a clean air, and now things are better. This and the other. Why couldn't we pay attention to that a little earlier?